Welcome back to the third and final session of this short series on how to use copulas in R. And what I'm going to be talking about this time is how to evaluate copulas and also how to create simulations. And both of these are relatively straightforward once you've actually created your copula object and you've got the results of the fit uh, from your uh, earlier analysis. And you know, in theory, you don't even need to do this. You can come up with parameters uh, independently and just put them into R. But you know, given it's so easy to do the fitting in R, you might as well do the whole process in R. So first, evaluating copulas. And this is relatively straightforward using the pcopula function. And the inputs that you need here are the quantiles of the marginal distribution. So you need to get this from the values to, to work out what quantiles you, you want to have, what probabilities you want to consider from these distribution. But once you've done that, it's very straightforward. So, for example, say that you wanted to know what the joint probability for all six of your variables was that they were in the bottom 10% of their values. And let's assume they're all joined by a t copula, and let's assume that it's the t copula that we played around with last time. So we'll assume the correlations are found by the data. We'll assume that it's six degrees of freedom, because when you're doing this particular function, you need to have uh, an integer uh, value for your degrees of freedom. And uh, as you remember, when, what we found from the data was at about 6.2, so let's use six. And then we'll just plug that into the, into the function that we use. So the first thing we need to do is to put the correlations from the fit uh, into a vector. Now, you remember the estimates that we had. There were 16 rather than 15 in that run because the 16th estimate was for the degrees of freedom. So if we want the correlations, we just take the first 15. We then create a t copula object, as we did before, setting the dispersion structure to unstructured. That means we'll have a separate correlation coefficient for every pair of variables. Setting the degrees of freedom to 6 because we need to have uh, an integer value. And then we create a vector which represents the lowest 10% of observations across each of the six dimensions that we're looking at, for, so for each of those six series. And then we evaluate it. So first, t estimates. That's what we're going to call the vector that we have which has the correlations in. So for that, we use fitted tml. You'll remember that's the object that we created. And from that, we use an estimate as the item that we're looking at, and we just want the first 15 items. So estimate throws out a vector, which is just a, a single column of information, and we want the first 15 values, so we want from 1 colon to 15. And we can see what that looks like just by typing out t estimates, and it confirms that we have just got the correlations and no degrees of freedom stuck on the end. Then I created a, uh, a copula evaluation object using the tcopula, which I called tcopevalobj. As you will recall, I'm not very good at creating interesting names, but I don't think it's very descriptive. And into this, we will put in uh, something from tcopula, which uh, tells us the structure of the copula. So the parameters that we have are the ones from the uh, t-estimates vector we just created, six dimensions, unstructured dispersion structure, which you need to have if you're putting in um, all of those separate correlations, and degrees of freedom equals 6. And then we can just look at what tcop eval object looks like by typing it out and hitting uh, control enter on that line of code. And then to uh, look at what the result is, we just use pcopula, and as I said, we want to have 10% uh, across six dimensions, so we use the c function which um, creates a, uh, a vector with the number of objects within it. And I just want to repeat the number 0 0.1 six times. So I just have C, then in brackets, rep 0 0.1 comma 6. And I'll just repeat 0 0.16 times. And C will join them together into a vector. And I want to evaluate that probability using this copula object which I've just created. Now, if I wanted to store this number, then I'd just create something else called, um, say, tcop eval result. Uh, then a left arrow and a line, and put that before pcopula. And then I'll just stick the results from this analysis into, um, well, just a, an object which would just be a single cell, which would give me the probability. So 
this does uh, require the quantiles to be calculated. So, you know, if, if you wanted to know, say, the joint probability that all the returns were below zero, then you'd need to calculate the probability that the return was below zero for each variable, because what we're looking at here is just things in terms of quantiles. So this is assuming that we just want, say, the lower 10%. If we wanted to have something explicit in terms of the returns, then we need to calculate the probability of each of those individual returns, which would then be joined by the copula that we're looking at. So here's what the results look like. You'll see first we've got the um, T estimates uh, that we've created, uh, and that shows you uh, we've just got those 15 correlations. Then below that, we've got the T copula evaluation object, which I've created, uh, which has D equals 6 for the degrees of freedom. It's across six dimensions, and the uh, correlations are those that we had in the T estimates that we just put in, and the dispersion structure is unstructured. Then evaluating the copula, running that code gives us the joint probability of all six, um, all six um, individual series having a return in the lowest 10% of the distribution, and the joint probability of that is 0 0.0142. Uh, so that's how easy it is to create that joint probability. We can also very easily create simulations of T copulas because what we've done there is just calculate directly the probability. It might be though that you want to have a number of simulations. So say we wanted to have a thousand simulations across all of our variables. It takes very little work to carry out the simulations and to view the results. The only other thing that you want to do to might want to do to take it from two lines of code to three is to set a seed for the random number. Now this is usually a good idea because if you set a seed for your random number that means that whenever you use that seed your simulations will be the same. So from a checking point of view it's helpful to explicitly set a seed and then run the simulations because then you've got something where if someone's checking it they can uh, run the same simulation with the same seed and they should get the same results. So what we do is set.seed5, so that's setting our seed number to 5, and then he creates this object tsims, so data frame tsims, and into that you're going to be using the function rcopula to give you a thousand simulations based on our tcopula evaluation object, so with those correlations and the six degrees of freedom before. And then tsims will give you the results of those simulations. So that's what the three lines of code look like. And that is the, uh, and the, and the bottom right is the first 15 lines of our thousand lines of, of simulations, which is, it, it's, it's so straightforward. Now the thing is, the copula output is obviously useful, but if you want to have simulations of particular returns, you're going to need to link the copula outputs to um, a particular marginal distribution. So if you remember how we started with all of this, we started with our uh, underlying distributions and we then stripped out the marginal distributions so we just had the probabilities. So what we're doing here is essentially reversing that process. We're creating all of our probabilities and then we need to use these probabilities to plug back into a marginal distribution and to give us our simulated uh, returns according to that distribution. And, and this is where the mass package comes in that we um, loaded, that we uh, installed right at the start of, of the series. What we do with a mass package is we use one of the functions that sits in there called fit distr, uh, fit distribution. And then we specify whatever distribution we want to have. Um, now, to do this, we need to give it some starting values based on the data that we're going to use. So the example that we've got here uses the first data series. So what it does is it looks at values so S1 mean, which is the mean of that data series, S1 SD, the standard deviation of that series, and it uses those as the starting points for um, the fit for the data that we're trying to find. So something we called tfit here uses the fit dist r function. I'm not sure they ever write these functions expecting someone to have to say them out loud. Uh, it's much easier to read it. But anyway, fit dist r, and what we're putting in is the return summary that we had from the first series. We're telling it that we want to use a t distribution, 
And the starting parameters we're going to use for this fit are for m, we're going to use s1 mean. For s, which isn't actually the standard deviation of the t-distribution, it's the spread parameter, which is slightly different. Um, it's uh, the, the, the standard deviation of the t-distribution and the spread parameter are linked um, by the degrees of freedom that, uh, that, that, that they used. And then degrees of freedom, so we'll, we'll start with the number 5. You know, it, it doesn't really matter what the number is, as long as it's not a million miles away from where you think the number might be. And 5 seems like a reasonable starting point. And then we'll let it do its stuff, and we'll look and see what the resulting um, fit looks like in, in T fit. So, again, the, the, the top panel here is how the code looks when you uh, type it into the file in R. And the bottom is... Uh, the results that you get from this uh, from this analysis. Um, you often get warnings thrown up um, when you're trying to do this. I don't tend to worry about them too much as long as I get some numbers out of the out of the end of it. And what you can see here that what we've got is the parameters and then the standard errors around them. So the parameter for the mean is 0 0.003, for the spread factor is 0 0.014, and the degrees of freedom is 2.9, so a little bit lower than, than our estimate. We then need to combine the copula and the marginal distributions to, to get our simulated returns. And again, I'm just looking at this for the first of the columns. This is something which you could um, do for all six columns using using a loop um, similar to the one that we described when we were pulling the data out of the distributions in the first place. So we can combine these parameters with the output from the copula and get our first projected marginal distribution and parameterize it. We're going to parameterize it with the fitted values, um, except for the expected return, because what I tend to do when I'm doing this kind of work is. Um, for correlations, I'll just take historical data. For volatility, I usually take historical data as well. But for expected returns, the, the future is not necessarily going to look like the past, so I usually have a different approach for working out my forward-looking returns. And you can use this here by saying, well, my forward-looking return, uh, I'm going to use um, 0 0.002. And I'll put that into this parameter, t log 1. My scale and degrees of freedom, though, I will just take from the estimates. And the estimates, uh, actually, from this one, I, we can use a, a dollar sign rather than an at sign to pull out that information. So tfit underscore one dollar estimate, that uh, number two, so the second item in that parameter is the scale parameter, and number three uh, in uh, that uh, vector it gives us the degrees of freedom. So if you remember the previous slide, you had three items there. The first is the location, second is scale, third is degrees of freedom. We're just pulling out the second one for the scale, the third for degrees of freedom, and, and putting those into those two parameters, T scale one and TDF one. Then I create um, some uh, a matrix of projections, which again is going to be zeros. I'm going to give it six columns because, you know, in case I get around to filling the other six columns as well. And it's going to be a thousand rows long because that's how many parameters we've got. And then into the first column of this matrix of projections, so T projections, um, uh, open square brackets, comma one, so all the rows but just the first column, I'm going to have something which um, is has an average of 0 0.002, so I add that to everything, and has a scale of uh, T scale 1, so that is the um, scale that I want to have, uh, the variability that I want to have, and then something I'm going to pull out from a standard T distribution using the function QT, and the probabilities are going to be pulled in from the T simulation, so the first column of those, and the degrees of freedom are going to be TDF1. So, so what I've done in there is everything in the brackets after QT is giving me some um, the, the output of a T distribution with the probabilities defined by the simulations and degrees of freedom, and we can use the actual degrees of freedom here, defined by our data. But it's going to give us something which has a scale of 1 and a mean of zero. So I don't want a scale of one, I want a scale which is equal to t scale one. 
So I want to um, adjust that scale. So I multiply those standard t variates by t scale 1. That still gives me something which is centered on 0. And I don't want it centered on 0. I want it centered on 0 0.002. So I add 0 0.002 to all of those outputs. And what that gives me is projections which have the uh, characteristics um, in the three lines above. So with that particular uh, location parameter, scale parameter, and those degrees of freedom. And what's more, the data that I've got is going to be linked to all of the other data for the other five distributions by the copula that we worked with earlier. So, how do the results look? Well, again, top left, that's what the code looks like in the file. And then, bottom right, you can see we've got a matrix which is all zeros apart from that first column that we put in. And that first column is going to be the uh, T variate that we just created. And if we do the same for the second, third, and fourth, we'd again, we'd have a range of T distributions, but all that data will be linked by that underlying copula that we worked with. So there you have it. We've gone from raw data to creating uh, copula objects, to fitting copulas to that data, to being able to evaluate those copulas, and even to use that raw data to come up with a whole load of simulations using a very small number of lines of code. So essentially what you've got there is pretty much everything you need to fit a multi-asset model linked by a T copula or whatever copula you want with marginal distributions of whatever you want. It really is that simple. And you've got something with there which is going to be you know, providing you're careful in how you use it as robust as many more complicated approaches that, that others may use. So it's, it's very powerful indeed, uh, the, the program R, which, which lets you carry out this kind of analysis. So I hope that's been interesting and useful and shown you what you can do with R in relation to uh, copulas. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video or this series of videos and uh, please do uh, leave me any comments if you have any questions which I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer and uh, as always please like, subscribe, share and all the other things that one is supposed to do with a YouTube video. Thank you very much.